Hello, April. How are you? I am wonderful, Tim. How are you? I am wonderful. The first thing I want to call out is if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm not in my high-end multi-million dollar studio. I'm in a lowly hotel today. Multi-million dollar studio? I, I Okay. I, I undervalued it. I would say maybe mm-hmm. tens of millions. But yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> there's a lot of gear in there. A lot. There is. There's some Amazon lighting. There is yeah. a Mac Mini. There's not one, two computer screens. So yeah. And a microphone. Wow. I know. What's I know. your hotel picture behind you? Oh, I don't know. Um, it looks like a combination of a sunset and abstract art. Scoot, Can, scoot that way. I'm sorry. Here, is that better? Oh, boy. There we go. Okay. Can you hey, see that's that? not bad. It's yeah, not that's terrible. Sometimes, sometimes they can be a little like bizarre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I'm, I'm traveling because as of us having this conversation, I'm at the Preston Sprinkle Presents Exiles in Babylon conference, which has caused right. quite the stir from some people online, as you and I both know. So I'm here. I, I am. I'm in the wow. middle of it. <laughs> I can't wait to hear how that all goes. Probably on our next recap. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, everything really starts today. I'm I'm looking forward to hanging out with my friend Daniel Bonanora. He's a Christian Palestinian who we, we've had on the podcast twice. And I met him yesterday for the first time. We got lunch with Preston. It went really well. But yeah, I, I'm very interested to see how this is all going to shake out. Um, I'm giving my my 15-minute presentation tonight on a panel of, of deconstructionists like myself, but I'm the only one who went in a more progressive direction. So that will be interesting. So, so you're you're the only one that deconstructed to have more sex. <laughs> oh, totally. Uh, yeah, more immoral According sex, by the, the way. Yeah, totally. right. Not the yeah. not the married one. No, definitely not. The first thing I said to Sarah was, "I deconstructed. I want an open marriage." That was the le- <laughs> next step out of my <laughs> next words out of my mouth. <laughs> That's a joke, everyone. That's not that, that, yeah. that that's not for us, okay? But Sarah, they're gonna and I are clip very happy. the the nationalists are gonna clip that. Be like, see, we told y'all. Megan Basham's like, look, journalism. Tim Whitaker said this. Mm-hmm. I'm a journalist, and Tim Whitaker wants an open marriage. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, um, so we'll see how this event goes. Um, yeah. I, I I don't know. I, I like traveling, but I also feel guilty for traveling because I'm leaving Sarah with the kids for a couple of days. But it is what it is. You know, I just it's it's interesting doing this work and you're traveling so much. But I'm happy to be here and I will report next week a full, I'm sure, recap in some way, shape or form. Awesome. Before we get into our, oh, my gosh, our huge recap of what I know. <laughs> this last week. Um, I have to, I have to open us up, not in prayer, um, in another repentant moment because last week at the beginning I said I was going to give an update on my Phoenix Suns prophecy, and then we got into some weeds and we just didn't do it. But so I'm sorry we didn't <sighs> actually give an update, but I'm going to give an update now that the Phoenix Suns clinched the playoffs. They are in. So they Yay. heeded that that warning from the eclipse because of all the Marion cities for Sean Marion, which he played who played with the Phoenix Suns. They heeded that warning. They were in eighth at the time. Now they're in sixth, and their first game in the playoffs is on Saturday. So who knows? Maybe they're gonna go all the way. You you're really a prophet. I mean, you're you're more accurate than those other jokers who were like, the world's gonna end, and you're like, how about the Suns go to the playoffs? And you were right. So I think we should start giving you money. Mm, that makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I know. I, I do just want to like legally say I don't actually think that the Suns are going to win at all. So please, like, bet on yeah. them at your own risk. Like, <laughs> Good I'm not disclaimer. telling you. <laughs> <laughs> we get some angry they... emails. I put my life savings betting on the Suns winning. It's like, wait, this is satire, everyone. Satire. <laughs> yeah, it would be. I would lose my mind though if they actually did win at all. I'd be like, wait a second. Do I need to start prophesying more things? <laughs> <laughs> you go to Beecher, God gave me a dream. <laughs> yeah, but it's like things that don't matter, like who wins the NBA playoffs. Yeah, but. or like the grocery store is out of milk. <laughs> like super <laughs> yeah. random things. <laughs> um, by the way, I want I, I tried to do it as you were talking, but I couldn't do it in time. I'm going to get a worship pad that we can – filter in whenever we go to our mm. repentance so so the holy spirit really shows up and it's very sincere oh, yeah. yeah i'm gonna work the holy that. spirit only shows up if you play those pads that's 100%. kind of like the rule of the holy spirit i'm pretty 100%. sure 100 percent. it's in the bible april we all know this and you and i i mean we, we we're both musicians we both played in the church so we both know mm-hmm. that 
that Holy Spirit pad, it works. I was the one doing the Holy Spirit pads oh. at my last church. I was the keyboardist who had to come up awkwardly at yes, the end. Yes, you had to sneak I up. I hated it with like, a passion because I'm like, uh, everyone's you have, you just have staring to, at me. You have to slowly fade in your pad, right? So it's not abrupt, but it kind of like just, mm-hmm. wait, where did that majestic sound come from? Oh, it was mm-hmm. April behind the pastor playing the pad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then you like zone out and then you realize you've been staring at one person for way too long and you make <laughs> eye contact and it's like, oh, shoot. And then you keep making eye contact with that person because you're because then you're self-conscious about it. Like, oh, are they still looking at me? And it's a whole thing. I, I thought I was the only one. There were times <laughs> drumming because, you know, people who aren't musicians don't understand that you get to a certain point where you're not thinking about like what you're playing. It just you're mm-hmm. just, you know, when I'm drumming, I'm thinking about lunch the next day. Oh, I forgot to do something for TNE. Like, that, that's I'm not thinking about right hand, left hand. And so you really can just zone out. And there have mm-hmm. been times where I've just looked. And I'm like, oh, shoot. I'm staring at a woman. <laughs> I am so sorry. Or 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 my 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 eyes are zoned out, but like I'm like looking at like someone's like stomach region, not even mm. knowing that. And then I look up and they're looking at me, and I'm like, I it's not what you think. Like I'm yeah. I was yeah. I was thinking about something totally different. <laughs> oh, it's so awkward. So uh, awkward. Good times, good times. Yeah. Um, I don't have any repentance uh, this week because. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, you're I'm a man. perfect. Yeah, also, I'm a man, you know. I don't Are you really... a stronger man? Nice, nice. Maybe. Ah. We're going to find out. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> I know. We have to get moving because there is so much to get into. Let's so let's much. go to some of the easier stuff. So our boy, Josh Howerton. Let's just give an update mm. about Josh. Okay, okay so yeah. so Josh kind of apologized, which I, I was actually happy about. Okay, I said to myself, whoa, okay, Josh issues – some kind of apology because we and we covered this last week. Listen to last week's recap. You know what mm-hmm. he said was 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 pretty problematic, and also something to, to bring up. I'm gonna pull up a um, uh, a tweet here if you're watching on YouTube. Is a, a woman actually approached Josh about the same joke that he used recently a couple years ago? This article has it here. Um, her last name is Robertson, and she said to to Josh in the email. Again, this is a few years ago. These may be jokes to you, but they are at the expense of half of all the image bearers, the physically weaker sex, we'll get, we'll ignore that part, who have been used and abused by men since the beginning of time. I doubt you intended to cause harm, but the impact caused harm nonetheless. So this is actually, I mean, overall, I think a great statement of, hey, imp- impact matters more than intent, you know? Mm-hmm. And so Josh, it, it, there's a whole um, article on this. He responds really charitably. Great. A couple of weeks ago, he does the same joke again and gets a lot of flack for it. And then he issues an apology. But then... It was not really an apology. But yes, continue. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, what, what what would you say? It was an acknowledgement? It was a, I'm sorry you felt bad. Okay, a sorry you felt bad. But then some astute <laughs> people on the internet, because the internet remains undefeated, realize that this sounded eerily similar to a different pastor's... Mm-hmm. Um. Sorry, I made you feel that way. So I have a side by side comparison, and again, I recommend, especially folks, if you're watching on, if you're listening on podcasts, watch it on YouTube so you can see who's talking when. But I'm going to play this minute long clip to kind of demonstrate Josh's words versus his other pastor's words, uh, and there are friends, by the way. Like Josh talks about this later on. Um, but here's what it sounds like. Buckle up. Here we go. You tell me, audience, what you think. Church, if you got your Bibles, and I hope you do, grab them. We're going to be in Psalm 34, and as you find your way to Psalm 34, I just need to address a thing. I need to address a thing. I'm going to address a That's thing. That's Josh Howerton. Okay. So, yeah. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 18, Other pastor. that careless words stab like a sword, and wise words lead to healing. It says that careless words can stab like a sword, but that wise words lead to healing. And what the Bible means in Proverbs 12, when it says careless words stab like a sword, it means regardless of your intent, like if I was careless with a pocket knife and it slipped out of my hand and stabbed you in the face. And what that verse means is that like even if somebody had a steak knife and they like had the intent to cut their steak and their hand slipped and accidentally stab you in the face. Church, I need you to hear this, okay? Three things. I love you. I love you. I love this church. I love getting to do this thing together. Hey, I need you to hear three things. Number one. I love you. Okay, so there's a side by side. Now, now people started going around the internet saying this is plagiarized. I, I have a different take, but April, give me your thoughts on this. I mean, you, you seen the video. What do you think? So first of all, saying, like, that's not really an apology. That's just saying, 
I said a thing and I recognize that you were offended by it and I'm sorry about that kind mm, of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. not really owning that, like not understanding why what was said was harmful. Um, secondly, even if, like, how can we take that apology genuinely when it's plagiarized or copycatted or recycled, however you want to spin it? How is yeah. that? Also, why, why stabbed in the face? Like, why, <laughs> why go to such an like drastic example? And, you know, I mean, I guess you could say, well, he didn't plagiarize because Josh said steak knife and the other guy said pocket knife, which right. is still weird. But like, can you even, I'm trying to think like, you know, if I'm cutting a steak, in what world could I just go to your <laughs> stabbing you in the face? <laughs> Q Toby Max, we're living, we're living, we're living in extreme day days. You know, like if someone has a knife sticking out of their, fa their head, like Josh Howard, who's like, it's extreme. <laughs> also, Josh's I love you was way creepier. Yeah. I yeah. Love yeah. you. Yes. No, so totally. whispery and like the cadence. Blech. Anyway, well, what's your take? First off, I got to pause. I don't want to hear about creepy whispers from you after you posted that purity culture video where you talking about licking cupcakes. I was uncomfortable. I'm like, <laughs> oh, the, uh, I, I want to keep watching, but I also want to scroll as fast as I can. So I'm just saying the pot calling the kettle black in, in that instance. Well, I was doing that intentionally. It's intentionally uncomfy <laughs> to make a point about how weird purity culture is. Well, mission accomplished. I was uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> So here's my thought, right? So first off, yes, the internet picked this up and the word plagiarized came around. Now, I get it. The internet, especially when it comes to mega church pastors, because as we're going to discover later on, they continue to demonstrate how untrustworthy how untrustworthy they are. I think it's totally fair to say Josh plagiarized. However, here's what I've been realizing doing this work and kind of being connected to other people in the same spaces that you and I occupy and beyond. Everyone talks to everyone behind the scenes. Right. So, so here, here, here's what happened. Josh, let me pull up um, uh, what he said here. So Josh goes online and says this, the internet accused me of quote, plagiarizing a portion of a pastor Joby sermon last week, not knowing Joby called me as my preacher to encourage and help me with sermon. Give, give me some language and we help each other with teaching content often. That's, that's how he uh, wrote it. If you ever hear anything from me and one of pastor Joby sermons, yup. He's got my permission, and we probably texted about it. Pastors are constantly helping each other with communication because we have a heart to help and just want to build the kingdom. The new thing is for the internet to accuse pastors of plagiarizing sermon content. And then he has a link to what he thinks about that. So here, here's the thing, right? I actually think Josh is right here. I Here's my, and we don't know this emphatically, my guess is this. Josh gets all this flack. Josh, deep down, is a little concerned. He's like, uh-oh. Like the internet's really going hard. A lot of women are upset. People like Sheila Gregor and others are really blowing this thing up. And I think he reaches out to his other mega church pastor buddy, in this case, Pastor Joby, and he's like, yo, I'm under fire. What, you know, do you have any thoughts on how should I, I should approach this? And I think Joby goes, hey, dude, no worries. I got this thing in the bag. It's already pre written. Just take this and tweak it for your audience. And he goes, great, man. Thanks so much. And then he essentially does that. So I don't think it was plagiarizing. I think it was one mega church bro helping out another mega church bro. Um, and then behind scenes saying, hey, man, this is a great, you know, um, whatever illustration to use to demonstrate a way that sounds like you're taking accountability. Because you're acknowledging that you had the knife and you slipped, but also really one that says, and it was an accident, you know, or like, uh, well, I'm sorry you felt that way. And also, I love this church. So that's my take on the Josh Howerton situation. Well, is it, would it not still be plagiarizing though, just because it's pl like plagiarizing with consent? Like it's still copying. <sighs> Well, I, honestly, I'm sure there's someone in the audience who's like, I, I, I could break this down for everyone right now. But my understanding is that plagiarizing does not involve the consent part. Like you're actually, mm. you're stealing someone's own words and using them as your own. Um, but you're still I, not giving credit in this sense. You're stealing. No, that's true. That's true. But or borrowing, did, I guess. Right. I mean, I think to the audience, it's at a minimum misleading, right? The audience mm. probably thinks that like Josh thought about this and like – thought about this analogy and thought about like this way of explaining it when in reality he's just copying some other pastor's sermon or mm -hmm. quote unquote apology. So I, I think at a minimum it's deceptive. Yeah. Cause I think 
regardless of how you look at it, plagiarizing or not, he didn't come up with a genuine apology himself and did, did not do the work himself. He tried to figure out the quickest way to get out of a situation without actually learning anything. Yes. No, I agree. And I do want to compare and contrast that, right, to JP. I think it's um, Harris Creek Church. He's a mega church pastor over there. When he said some stuff online or um, in a sermon illustration that went pretty semi-viral, um, he actually took the time, did the work, acknowledged what he said was harmful, and actually said on stage how sorry he was for using that illustration. So I think it actually is a good compare and contrast, right, of like, yeah. you're right, Josh pretty much is saying, yo, any pastor's got like a little quick line I can use to kind of – get the crowds to you know quiet down a little bit compared to someone like JP who in that one instance anyway uh, definitely seemed much more genuine and wanted to learn and understand what he was missing so I agree yeah all right well let's get into the into the steak let's take our steak knives April and let's let's chop away because Josh Howerton the guy who you know likes to talk about telling women to stand where they need to stand um, and then says I was just joking it was just a joke everyone whatever. He was also at another event last weekend. Can you guess what event he was at, April? Oh, I bet it had an Asherah pole. <laughs> an Asherah pole. Yes. Jo oh, Josh was at the Stronger Men's Conference 2024 hosted by James mm -hmm. River Church. Yeah, there was a um, – I don't have the, the photo on hand, but there was a photo of him that was screenshotted essentially of his story watching Mark Driscoll preach a sermon. Ooh. And I thought to myself, of course he would. Of course Josh Howerton would go to this event and sit underneath the teaching of Mark Driscoll and not have a problem with it. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. And luckily – this story goes much deeper, much deeper. So and much deeper. They're, 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 yeah, okay, let's just start from the beginning, okay, everyone? Whew. Let me try and tee this up. Are you cool with that, April, if I try and tee it up tee, and get to a video? it up. Okay. Yes. Yeah, th let me just say there's a lot of layers here, and I've been struggling with getting all of them out to you in a succinct way, but hey, we're podcasting, so let's just go for it. So James River Church does this annual event called the Stronger Men's Conference. Last year, a clip of, the, of that conference went viral. With a, They brought out a real tank, and they had a guy who looked like Rambo with machine guns shooting these machine guns while running over a bunch of cars, and pyrotechnics were going off in the background. That was it last was actually year's conference. Chuck Norris. They announced it. It wasn't oh. Chuck Norris. It was Chuck Norris cosplay, but they literally introduced the guy as Chuck Norris. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if, I, if I can find that clip at some point um, while, while you're talking. And um, So anyway, but yeah, so so this all happens. And then this year, they had another men, Stronger Men's Conference. It was a lot of the same lineup, including Mark Driscoll. Now, Mark Driscoll has spoken, I think, two or three times at this event, okay? James River Church is the largest Assemblies of God church in the U.S. They're seen as like the Holy Grail. If you're speaking at that church or if you're a part of that world— that's the place to be. And James Lind or John Lindell, he is the senior pastor of this church, and he's also transitioning out. One of his sons, I believe his name is Brandon, is taking over the church. Okay. You should also know, before we get into this, that Mark Driscoll and John Lindell have been friends for, I think, close to two decades. Okay? In yeah. fact, um, John Lindell was one of the first pastors to replatform Mark. When all of the abuse allegations came out. So I'm not – let me just say to April that when we talk about maybe being or agreeing with someone in this world, we already have the understanding that they're all problematic, right? Like, like I, I'm not trying to come to Lindell's defense or James River Church's right. defense and say, look, they're good people. Anyone who's willing to platform someone like Mark um, after the story after story of abuse – um, I, I, I just don't trust. Okay. Well, James River was the church that last year claimed a woman grew three toes, but refused to provide any yes, like yes. <laughs> medical evidence for that. And I get a lot of DMs from people who went to that church. It's it, I would not recommend anyone go to that church or give them. I went to that money. church because <gasps> I I went to um, Evangel University for a year and like was friends with John's daughter. She went to Evangel too. Like I've used to go to that church, so a little bit connected. Have you repented? Of going to that church? I think it was down on the list of all the things we needed to repent <laughs> for, for, for Christian nationalism and all that stuff. But I will definitely 
you know, cue up the pads. I'll, I'll repent yeah, of that perfect, later. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so this conference happens. Oh, and let me just say, friends, I, I have several sources on the inside. So the story I'm telling you comes from sources that I would trust enough to say what they're telling me is accurate. So so the theme this year was it's a Friday, Saturday event. Friday night is like the pre-opener. It was a very much a, like an America's Got Talent kind of theme. So they had all these different kinds of performances all right, going on um, in front of the stage. They had people doing all this kind of stuff. They, they had a guy. Okay, now let me tell, I'm going to give people the facts here. There's a lot of misinformation going around. These, this is just pure data. They had a guy who did a performance on America's Got Talent, and what he does is he's an, he's really an acrobat and like a um, one of those um, what do you call it like strength people. Like he just shows off how strong he is on everything, and he does this act where he he swallows a sword. He climbs, it's got to be like a 50-foot pole. I mean, it's tall. It looks almost like a telephone pole. He climbs yeah. a telephone pole, and then he angles shirtless. his body. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he can be shirtless. In this case, he was shirtless. And he angles his body so his head's facing down, and then he lets himself drop all the way until the very last second, face first, when the sword would, would hit the ground and he stops himself, okay? So it's, it's like one of these circus... Olay Cirque, or like yeah, Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, is that what we call? Wait, is it Olay or yeah. is, okay? I don't Cirque, wanna, du, Cirque du Soleil. I don't want to get yelled at by Sarah again. Like you know, no more Jose can you see? So I just I'll trust you on that. You're just um, like Circus. <laughs> yeah, Circus <laughs> Olay. I don't know. <laughs> circus shop on the Hamala Olay. Um, so <laughs> it's like it's a pretty standard thing that happens if you went to the circus, you would see something like this. Okay, so so this happens. Mark Driscoll's in the audience, sees everything. Another guy preaches on Friday, everything's fine. Mark Driscoll's fine. In the green room, he's fine. He's hanging out with John Lindell, he's fine. Everything's fine, doesn't say a word. The next day, I have, now, I have a, a story that, I, again, I can't confirm all of this, but this is my information that I have. John and Mark get breakfast together, everything's fine. Everything's great. Saturday comes, Mark's going to preach for the Stronger Men's Conference. Mark gets up, does his thing, and then... About three quarters in, things take a turn. And I have mm. the video of this. Now, I tried to isolate the audio as best as I could. And Noah, it, I'm sorry, Mr. Podcast Producer, I did my best. So, friends, listen closely. Mark kind of goes into this, this talk about, like, the Jezebel and Ahab spirit. It's actually a five-minute clip. I'm not going to play the whole thing. You can find it online. I kind of just got up to the point where things get real tense. And he calls out the person um, who did this performance. All right. And I'll let you hear what happens. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, I also put a clip, I overlaid the actual performance of what, uh, from that performer, uh, on Friday as well. So you're going to see both. So here we go. Here's the clip of Mark talking when things get real weird. It's not what I'm going to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our vest. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high price. On it was a pole, a national. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to see the respect. In front of that was a man who ripped the shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at strip club. Okay, let me just pause right here. You're going to hear someone yell in a minute. Listen closely to what happens here. And then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't us and look up the symbol. He descended. Mm, so good. And then... He swallowed a sword. Did you hear that? You hear it? He said, you're out of line, Mark. That's Lindell on the side of the stage telling Mark you're out of line as essentially Mark is saying that this, this whole event was opened up by someone who had a Jezebel spirit inside of them because they took off their shirt, did some acrobatic performances, swallowed a sword, climbed a pole, and went down it. And that's the Jezebel spirit. So that, that's where we are. Keep listening. <laughs> And Jesus Christ, okay, Pastor John, I'll oh, say that. You're done. Thank you. You're done. Okay, so 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 Mark goes on this off script moment. John Lindell goes, You're done. 
You're done, Mark. Now, this isn't, this isn't a big event. There, it, it's a stadium. There's probably 10,000 people here, all right? And so Mark says, okay, I received that. He packs up his stuff. He walks out. Now, let, you're going to hear the crowd go crazy, and then you're going to hear Lindell come on stage and start talking. Here's what he says. So all the boos, by the way, just so, just so you know, audience, the boos are for Mark being kicked off the stage, not for what he said. They are loud. Okay, this is Lindell talking. So the crowd's chanting, bring him back, bring him back. So I, I'm translating in case the audience can't understand. Lindell says uh, he was out of line. Mark should have come to me first. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. If your brother offends you, go to him privately. I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If he wanted to say it, he can say it to me. Okay, so so the so the, the place goes crazy. Now you should know before this, that Friday, the crowd loved the performance. The crowd was cheering, the crowd was all about it, it was powerful, whatever. And then Mark gets on stage, says essentially that this man's acting like a woman, right, and stripping, and now the crowd goes crazy and is mad at John Liddell for kicking him off the stage. I'll stop there and let you give your thoughts on this, because there's so much more to the story. I have so many thoughts on this. Um I don't know if you was the part in the clip that you shared where Mark says he's been up he was up till one AM I didn't share that part. thinking about this. So like right right before Mark goes on this little thing, he's like, I was up till one AM. That's why my praying. voice is so raspy. That's what he says. I know. He's yeah. like praying for you all. It's like he had such a burden. Like <sighs> clearly not burden enough to talk to John ahead of time. No, of um, course not. Yeah, but okay. There's so many angles here. So first of all, at an yeah. all men's event, Mark found a way to blame women. Yep. Like why, uh, why even bring, like he took his shirt off like a woman does. <laughs> and then he climbed a, a pole as a woman. Mm. Like, like there are male strippers. There's no need to even bring women into it whatsoever but i guess he had to because of the jezebel spirit and to all the naysayers out there because you and i both made content about this and totally I, I don't know about you but i've been inundated with a lot of driscoll defenders saying like he was in the right he's oh, yes. like the holy one in this situation and they're like well the jezebel spirit does not have a gender it does not have a gender it is male and female and i'm like okay so you can understand trans identity cool <laughs> Um, but also it is so disingenuous to be like, Jezebel can be for men too. Like, ha Tim, have you ever been called a Jezebel? Not once in my life. Thank you. I've been called it many times. Most girls that I know who grew up in the church who had an opinion about anything have been called a Jezebel at some point in their life. It is, yeah. a, it is a sexist, misogynistic trope that men have used yep. for you know, however long to silence and sideline women. So the fact, like, just miss me with the fact that it had nothing to do with women. If it had nothing to do with women, he shouldn't have brought women into it. Secondly, <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> like, hmm. <laughs> secondly, like he was saying, like it was like a stripper, and I think the the performer did used to do adult entertainment at some point, but then became a Christian. Um, but he, what he was doing, was not sexual it was not an inherently seductive act no. and if you mark and all the defenders are out there being like it was sexual it was seductive like if you are thinking that that says more about you mark thinking about it until 1 a.m that says more <laughs> about you than it does about the performance also in a in that room like in in evangelical culture the whole like, like sex is such a is so hyper like everything is hypersexualized, but also so much repression exists in that world. 
that it, it kind of makes sense that you would see something that's not supposed to be sexual as something sexual and make you feel weird about it because yeah. you're taught to repress yeah. very natural desires and instincts. And so I could, I mean, I would imagine Mark may have mm, felt something that he didn't know what to do with and decided mm. to make it everybody else's problem. Like, I don't yeah. know for sure, but it's so, it's just, it's so stupid honestly like yeah. the fact it, but it's also such a stunt like mark driscoll is historically an abusive narcissistic yep. like awful yep. person like, there yep. was a whole podcast yep. that like multiple parts that was just an expose on what a terrible human mark driscoll is who does these publicity stunts who's one who likes the attention like this is not surprising that he would do this. Also, did you know that he recently has he has like a newish book out about the Jezebel oh, spirit? Of course, April. There are so many. We've only <laughs> this 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 clip is just the beginning. People don't even know what they're about to hear because it gets so much crazier. This story gets mind blowingly insane. And again, I'm going to give you guys first hand accounts from people who were there behind the scenes. Stuff you can only get by listening to the TNE Recaps podcast. Okay, I'm all done promoting <laughs> better, or pr uh, pr promoting ourselves. So, okay, you're right to all of that. You're right. Everything you said is totally on the money. Let me keep going with the story because the story gets Go. crazier. So, um, Lindell gets up, does his Matthew 18 thing. Mark tries to leave. Okay, like he gets off stage, goes for the exit, trying to, trying to tries to get outside of the stadium. Lindell finds Mark. He brings Mark back on stage. Him and Mark sit down for almost 30 minutes. And honestly, it was I watched like maybe I watched some of like the core pieces. It was just stroking each other's egos. Me and Mark have been brothers. Yeah. This is how brothers are gonna reconcile. Now, Mark says that he he goes to John, he says, I apologize to you. He never said sorry. He just said, I apologize. Now, you might say that's kind of semantics, but for someone like Mark, I think it's totally calculated because Mark is a very calculated person. So Mark gets on stage and says, I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. I don't want to dishonor, you know, the man of the house. A very patriarchal take on the whole thing, you know? And Lindell said something very interesting. He essentially said that, like, when people have an anointing, you can't critique them. It was so uncomfortable to hear what they had to say. Yeah. So they do this 30-minute long thing, and they quote-unquote reconcile on stage. This is how family reconciles. This is how brothers reconcile. Lind um, Mark Driscoll posts a picture of him and Lindell at the conference. And then Mark takes it down. And then mm. Mark takes it down. Okay? Wow. Mark takes the picture down and then starts talking even louder online about the Ahab and Jezebel spirit and demons and sex and all this stuff so he's been talking non-stop about non -stop. the jezebel spirit he announces that he's going to go live every day monday through friday and he sees that this story is picking up traction usa today picked it up so i think mark looks at this and goes this is an opportunity I have found another reason to get back in the news cycle. I have found another way to get people to my platform. And also, I was tracking online a lot of the a lot of like what are people on the ground, like your average Facebook user or like, you know, um, pastor or something in that more charismatic space saying mm -hmm. heavy, heavy on the side of Mark Driscoll. So, oh, yeah. I mean, heavy. This was I mean, Isaiah Salvatar, one of the biggest YouTubers, 880,000 subscribers. He's one of these like deliverance guys. He posts on his Instagram, this was demonic. And it's a, it's a snapshot of the guy going down the pole with his arms sprawled out. So it looks like an upside down cross. And then there's yep. fire behind it because that's just, that's just what happened with the pyrotechnics. And Isaiah goes, this is demonic. And so I'm, I'm livid. I even, I, met, I DM'd Isaiah and was like, dude. You don't know the full story. Not only was this not demonic, this guy's a Christian. This dude that you're calling yeah. demonic is a Christian. He just got saved. And then I commented on one of his his stories about – on one of his uh, posts about this. Isaiah never responds to my DMs, even though I told him I DM'd him, and he deletes my comment. I'm like, fine, whatever. So, so Mark definitely turned – I would say oh, yeah. that world totally towards him, right? And that makes sense because think about how primed that charismatic world is to look for demons everywhere. And how oh, when, yeah. you when you combine that with the fact that 75 to 80% of white Christian nationalists adhere to some kind of gifts of the spirit, demonic oppression, speaking in tongues ideology, it is a mm -hmm. match made in heaven. And Mark knows that. Mark knows that that world is totally intertwined with this groomer rhetoric and how those groomers are, are demonic, right? The sex thing is demonic. 
and Mark mm-hmm. capitalized. So, so this yeah. story gets crazy because Lin- Mark essentially blew up his relationship with Lindell, right, to get more clout and more fame to talk about this this whole thing, which has just been to me so crazy. And if I may, One, oh, go ahead. You yeah, go you, ahead. You, you, no, 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 go ahead. Comment oh, on. I was just gonna say I've seen a lot of comments too on my personal video and just on Facebook in general from everyday people. And a lot of them are saying, I don't like Mark Driscoll, but he is right here and he's a man of God. And and people ca- like calling Mark out probably have the Jezebel spirit and yeah, like 100%. all of this stuff. And Mark's, Mark ha- had this one tweet. Did you have the tweet that Mark Driscoll tweeted is it, about? Is it the sensationist one or is it a different one? Yeah, the sensationist one. This one, right? Which didn't Mark used to be a sensationist? Yes. Yes. The man is the man is a chameleon. He will he has changed so many shades. He started in the he started almost emergent, emergent church. Then he went mm. young, restless, and reformed. And then he got kicked out and was kind of like non-denominational. And then he found a new space in this whole charismatic demonic oppression world. Yeah, so so Mark Driscoll, he tweets this after this whole thing. When a demon like Jezebel is called out, the sensationists mm. rant and rage alongside the demons. The saying goes Quote, Satan's greatest trick is convincing the world he doesn't exist. And cessationists abide this lie by claiming the supernatural has no power. He's essentially saying here that the fact that there's no evidence of a Jezebel spirit that I'm calling out is proof that there is a Jezebel spirit, which is so stupid. <laughs> it, uh, April, you and I have talked about this a lot. If my audience has listened to me at all, they know I say this often. It blows my mind that Mark Driscoll was received in these spaces for so long. I mean, Josh Howerton was at that event watching Mark speak. Think about, I mean, the people tell me, oh, Mark's in the fringe. No, he's not. Mark has tripled his Instagram following. He has a huge following following on YouTube. He, he's promoting his new book conveniently during all of this. People like Josh Howerton, who pastors some of the world's largest churches, will see him speak and not say anything. Behind the scenes, everyone's all buddy-buddy with him. And we yeah. know that there is a documented legacy of abuse. 40 of his own yeah. elders said he wasn't qualified to lead his current church there's no elders there's no accountability he does whatever he wants and somehow Mm -hmm. people like josh howerton really believe that they have something to tell us about god (laughs) right like josh is like hey i'm a pastor i have an authority here dude you're listening to mark driscoll miss me miss me with what you miss me with your judgment calls let us not forget that mark driscoll has referred to women as penis homes yes and i think one of the most triggering things from the whole like the rise and fall of Mars Hill, the podcast that Christianity Today put out that exposed him, was like the story of one of the women who was one of the leaders in the church. And and I don't know, Mark had some kind of falling out because she started seeing the abuse. And in a meeting, he would not talk to her directly, would only talk to her husband. I know. Because like, no, I, I have to talk to the head of the household. Like it is so dehumanizing the way Mark has treated women and so for like someone like josh howerton to then be listening to mark driscoll after just being in hot water for saying a misogynistic joke himself by claiming it wasn't like they're all like misogyny and the patriarchy is such a huge problem in these circles and like the sat one of the saddest parts about this whole thing is the amount of women who are in my comments defending mark like he's doing this great thing i'm like mark does not care about you like the, this environment, this this structure does not care about women. And it's really disheartening to see the internalized misogyny that so many women have about themselves. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, um, every time Mark goes viral, one of my, I, I did a, a YouTube critique of Mark had to be almost a year ago now, maybe a year and a half ago. And somehow it's the first video on YouTube when you type in Mark Driscoll. It's like one of the first or second videos. And so most of my comments are, this guy, me, is crazy. Mark's a faithful gospel preacher. That's like the whole vibe. And it just, and it happened again. When he went viral last week, they found my video. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Mark is so good. Mark is preaching the truth. And I'm like, what are we What are we doing here? Now, I'm not sure if those people know about the legacy of Mark's abuse. I have no idea. But guess what? The gatekeepers do. John Liddell. This is why I don't feel bad for John Lindell at all. Because this, friends, this story gets even worse. There's a whole new update that happened like 12 hours ago that we're going to blow your minds with. And let me just preface by saying, I do not feel bad for John Lindell at all. Not one bit. 
That yeah. guy knew what he was dealing with. He saw the stories. He heard the stuff. And he said, you know what, Mark? We'll be a safe place for you. You can be platformed here. You can speak to men about what it means to be a stronger man. While Mark is maybe arguably the most beta male to ever exist, how he can't acknowledge how wrong he is. He can't repent. He can't say I'm sorry. He, he's completely narcissistic in, in how, yeah. and how he approaches this stuff. And here's my other story I wanted to tell you about this. This is the other side of the coin that, we have, that people have not been talking about. It's honestly made me very angry. Even with how Julie Roy's and Relevant, Re- Relevant Magazine have covered the story, they're using this stripper thing, you know, um, stripper performance or, um, you know, former stripper at men's conference. Okay, first off, let's get a few things straight. First, I'm not going to say this guy's name because he's, he's gotten so much heat. I don't want to drag him more into the weeds. This guy, yes, it's true. A long time ago, I think over a decade ago, he was an adult male performer in, at strip clubs. But he got quote unquote, saved a few years ago. And he goes to a church in LA. This guy's a Christian now. Like he's turned his life around in the evangelical sense, right? Like he did what people in that world hope that people do. They turn from their lifestyle and head to the church, right? He did that. And Mark knew that. And Mark called that dude out while he was in the audience for being part of a Jezebel and Ahab and demonic spirit. And I'm like, wow, bro, you're willing to cannibalize even one of your own for your own clout yeah. and people online stripper stripper first I'm, i would be so frustrated if i had a part of my life right that was from 10 years ago that was a really maybe um i would prefer not to be characterized that way anymore right if that was the headlines former x i'd be like that's not who i am what are we doing here you know and so right. it honestly bugs me and i i i I feel weird about this because i understand that we critique so much of the evangelical everything and we should but also, I do support people moving from one way of living to another if it's better for them, right? So if this guy was in a scene that was unhealthy, maybe there was drug use involved, I don't know. But that scene can have those things happen sometimes. And maybe he was just really depressed. And if he turned and went to a different place that welcomed him and accepted him, even if it's not my cup of tea, I'm so happy for him. Like, I'm happy that he found yeah. a better way forward, right? And so to watch Mark and people online like Isaiah Salvatore call him demonic and this guy's a stripper. Oh, this is crazy. Mark needs to fight the demons. It's just so dehumanizing to him as well. Yeah. And it just, it really infuriates me. Well, and I think there are valid criticisms about having that sort of entertainment in a church setting. Yes. Like the amount of, the amount of money that is spent. Yes. Like, you know, it's not, can you imagine Jesus going to a conference where there's an army <laughs> tank smashing cars, you know, cause that's what happened last year. But, the, but right. the thing is that was not the critique. The critique brought in women and brought in a Jezebel spirit. And like, where was all this? And, and I think I saw, I, I can't, I can't, I don't remember the details, but I saw some kind of mashup that I think there were other performers at this conference throughout the years of men that at some point had their shirts off. <laughs> I'm sure. I have no doubt about that. Like no one had a problem with it, but it was like, because he did it like a woman does, which just goes like a further point, like these types of men, like the, which I think is their biggest issue with queerness too, is like any man in their mind that is not this alpha male, this like toxic masculine person that shows any sort of thing that could be misconstrued as quote unquote feminine right. needs to be called out because femininity is weak and femininity is wrong yes. in their eyes. And it's like, it's just so dehumanizing as a, a woman. And also just think of like the, I, I know I could almost guarantee that in that room of that large of a people, there are queer men there or queer people there trying so hard yeah. not to be queer Yep. And being in that environment is just going to add more shame to who they are. And they can't be honest with that, with like the people around themselves. So they're just going to live with further and deeper shame. Yeah. I, I completely a thousand percent agree. There's so much to critique. That's a bad <laughs> critique. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, like there's so much we could unpack and, and, and we have before. So I'm with you a hundred percent. And, um, yeah, it just it drives me crazy. So, okay, so let's get kind of to where we are today because there's been new yeah new the news. update yes. yeah the update. So <laughs> so John Lindell went live yesterday on Facebook 
um, 45 minutes. And here's the headline from churchleaders.com. John Lindell calls Mark Driscoll to repent for trying to destroy James, James River Church and sow disunity in the Lindell family. So now I saw a few of the clips. Lindell read text messages. Like he had receipts. He wasn't just saying, here's the story. He was reading receipts. He was, he said, my son recounted this conversation with Mark. Here's what, here's what he said. He had a lot of receipts. And essentially Lindell says, quote, Mark, if you're listening to this message, we love you. And it's with a heavy heart that we are calling you to repent. Now, let me just say, if 40 of Mark's own elders couldn't convince Mark Driscoll to repent. This dude ain't got a shot in hell, right? This, yeah. Mark is not going to be like, oh, you're right, Pastor uh, Pastor John. It, we have been friends for two decades. I need to repent. No, this is the MO for Mark, okay? A podcast won't convince him to repent. 40 of his own elders won't convince him to repent. And Mark still to this day talks about that whole Mars Hill experience where he was the, the problem as him being the victim. Right, I went through one of the darkest moments in my life. I had everything taken away from me. Yeah, because you were a narcissistic abuser who wouldn't repent. So, so um, Lindell goes out on this 45-minute live stream and um, essentially says that not only – not only was Mark out of line, and not only does Mark need, need, need to repent from that, but Mark has been sowing disunity in my family. Okay, a couple paragraphs here. Lindell said that after the conference, Driscoll texted Lindell's son, David, several times, referring to Magala, um, that is the, the performer's name, I, I guess I said his name, as a, quote, gay porn stripper Jezebel, and, quote, completely demonic. Driscoll also left David a voicemail after receiving no reply. Lindell said that he reached out to Driscoll the next day to ask Driscoll to stop his pursuit of a situation. Driscoll responded by telling Lindell that he loved Lindell's family. Lindell then suggested that David return David, uh, Driscoll's call. David later recounted Driscoll telling him, I'm not wrong. Per David's account, Driscoll told David that, quote, there is something wrong at James River Church, that there is something evil at work in the church, and there is a mixture of the sinful and the sacred. Dude, Mark Driscoll needs therapy. Mark Driscoll needs to go to a therapist and get some help. Yeah. He does not sound healthy. This is he this is conspiratorial, but it gets worse. It gets worse. Lindell said that Driscoll further excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, Noah. I mean, let me pause my, pause my mic. <clears throat> what is wrong with my throat? Get it out. I'm Let trying. it out. Yeah, that, 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 that's that demonic. <laughs> that Jezebel spirit. That Jezebel spirit. Lindell said that Driscoll further told David that he needs to differ. Oh, so David is is um, Lindell's son. That he needed to differentiate from his father and brother and become the leader of James River Church. So Brandon is the one who's supposed to take over, his other son. Well, I think in the article it says he's passing it down to both sons. Oh, I read just Brandon. Okay. I thought that it says that. Oh, yeah, you're right. David, David and Brandon. You're right. My bad. My yeah. bad. In 2027. Yeah. Yeah. Lindell, while Lindell and his, his wife currently serve as the church's lead pastor, they announced in 2023 that leadership of the church will pass to David and Brandon in 2027. Yeah. So, so Mark is essentially saying, hey, get rid of Brandon. You should be the person. So, so this is what Mark, so, oh my God. So Mark and Lindell have been, think, think about it, think about it like this. Mark and Lindell have been friends for 20 years. Lindell has stuck his neck out for Mark many times, right? Saying, no, no, we're going to platform Mark. It's not what you think. I'm sure he's taking a lot of flack, including from folks like me. Lindell has Mark at his Stronger Men's Conference. Mark completely uses it for um, a viral moment to get more attention. And then Mark starts telling his son behind the scenes, hey, something's wrong at your dad's church. It's demonic. And by the way, you should be the one taking it over, not you and your brother. I don't want to sound callous and cruel. That's what you get, Lindell. Seriously. What, what, it's like, it's like did the you epitome, not think it was going to happen to you? Did you it's not the think? epitome of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. A thousand, a Those. thousand percent. A thousand. Like the writing has been on the walls for years. Now, do I feel bad for Lindell in the sense of the stress and, and like, you know, maybe the anxiety? Of course. He's a human, right? I mean, I, I don't I don't wish that on people. But I mean, yeah. Lindell, with all due respect, what did you think was going to happen? This guy runs yeah. people over because he does not care about people. Okay. He cares about being in the news. He cares about saying 
it's so funny to hear people like Mark be like, these this deconstruction progressivists are all about just shifting with the cultural tides when that's all Mark does. Mark has reinvented yeah. himself time and time again to match the cultural tide of evangelicalism. From yeah. emergent, young, restless, and reformed, now it's the charismatic thing, now he's all political, he wasn't for most of his life, at least, at least on the stage. He's totally someone who shifts his theology and faith right, to match some other cultural norm or cultural position that he thinks is going to be lucrative and bring more attention to him. So, yeah. sorry, Well, Lindell, John, but yeah. John also said, too, that his church was receiving death threats. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to mention that. I have a quote for that, too. Uh, and this, again, was just... I, again, I feel bad when people get death threats. Death threats are wrong. They should not be happening. Um, where is it? Where is – yeah. Additionally, Lindell said that the receptionists at James River Church received so many death threats and hateful calls that they unplugged the switchboard. Lindell reported that something similar happened at the headquarters for the Assemblies of God, the denomination of which James River Church is a part. Quote, this is Lindell. To this point, Mark has done nothing to calm down the vigilante acts of his followers, pointing out that he had followed the procedure for church discipline outlined by Jesus in Matthew 18. Lindell said he was now bringing the matter to the church. Yeah, ex again, like Lindell, I appreciate you trying to, trying to be biblical, but Mark doesn't play by those rules. Mark is never yeah. going to play by rules that make him submit to anything besides what Mark Driscoll wants to do. So True. this this has become quite the story. How can people like? If I mean, and I know people, there's a lot of people who are willfully ignorant and will just not learn the facts of the story. But yeah. how can you look at someone be like, oh, this Christian pastor's followers are sending death threats to someone he called out for a demo? Like, I don't remember reading about the disciples, you know, sending death threats to people who. I guess maybe Judas would be like the one, <laughs> the one exception there. <laughs> but, but regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless. So these followers are like Judas then, which is, you know, in, in evangelical uh, folklore, that's not uh, who you want to be. Yeah, um, it is. Yes, I completely agree. You know, I, low key, Mark loves it. Mark is all about this. Mark has capitalized on this. 100%. Him and his team were like, great, let's go live five days this week. Essentially, all they're doing is replaying old sermons from Mark talking about the Jezebel spirit, and let's pr promote your book. And they did. Yeah. No sense of, hey, everyone, let's calm down. I want to work this out with Lindell. No, no, no. It is full steam ahead for Mark. So, yeah. I mean, this, this, this is nothing new to our audience. We, we've documented this so many times, and now it's happened to them. Right now, the gatekeepers, the ones who love to call out the woke and the groomers and the demonic and the over-sexualization of society, have had that gun pointed on them. And yeah, it sucks, mm -hmm. doesn't it? And again, I don't want to sound harsh or callous or like, yeah, I love Lindell getting hurt or affected by this. I don't want that to happen. But we've been trying to warn, not just we, so many of us have been mm -hmm. warning, even moderate outlets like Christianity Today, which did the rise and fall of Mars Hill, people have been warning about Mark and what he does. And so I, 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 I don't have a lot of sympathy, but I do, I do have empathy, right? Like, okay, I feel bad. Yeah. I, I, I empathize with what you're going through. But man, yeah. we tried to warn you, bro. <laughs> we tried to warn right. you. So who knows? By next week, it could be even worse. We don't know. But that's the story. That's the full story. It is wild. What a weird world. What a weird world. Where it's like sword swallowing opening act climbs a pole that like and also what is what, do all are our do all poles contain the jezebel spirit you right. know like you know, if i see a bug climbing up a flagpole <laughs> is that is that the jezebel spirit in action right is, right is the jezebel spirit at the pole when we go to see you at the pole and pray at our public schools right right i i completely Got questions. agree no it's just it, also, it is yeah god Oh, this is like theologically. Did, yeah, or ahead. were you Pentecostal? Or do you uh, have for a, a little bit. For, for, okay, for, for, well, I, 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 yeah, I, I grew up Pentecostal, and yeah. we believed that the only omnipresent spirit is God, right? And the holy, the Holy Spirit, the, anyone in the Trinity, right? The three in one. The, those can be omnipresent. Yes. Any other spirit is not is singular. So here's my question: Like, just if if. Is the Jezebel spirit omnipresent? Are there multiple Jezebel spirits right. out there, which are demons? 
Right. Um, but also, we have a complete misunderstanding of who Jezebel was as a character in the Bible. She was yes. not a prostitute. She was right. not as a sexual, seductive woman. She was a queen who was an idol worshiper and tried to get people to stop worshiping Yahweh and to worship Baal. And like, she went after Elijah, but like the, nothing seductive in her story. And they've turned her into this, like any woman who has an opinion is, has a Jezebel spirit because they're not listening to their male leaders or whatever. I just want you to know that I've counted two poles in this room. There's a lamp pole and there's a oh, smaller no. lamp pole. And I think that the Jezebel spirit's here in the room with me right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it I'm probably tempted. we've been, we've summoned her. I'm being him. tempted. They, I guess, because there's, it doesn't have a gender. Right. We have right. summoned the Jezebel spirit <laughs> it, it, by it, talking it, about her. It is, it's, it's also very frustrating. Last thought on this for me, and then maybe we can go to, to the, the tweet of the week. But my last thought um, is, it's also frustrating to see what people think is demonic. Fire, oh a sword, a person anything with no shirt red. on. Yeah, anything red. Like this isn't bibl okay, quote unquote biblically speaking, that's not what being demonically influenced or demons are. Like that's that's just yeah. not what's going on here. And so again, like these people insist that they're being biblical and that and that people like us are capitulating the culture while their whole whole ethos about 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 what it means to be demonic is shaped by more modern notions of cultural understandings of demons and Satan. Right? right. It's like every time you see a picture uh, that goes viral of some Grammy performance where someone's wearing a lot of red or has like horns on their head, oh, it's Satan. By whose whose definition? Not the Bible's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's literally not, a, like, Alicia Keys, like in the the most right. recent halftime performance, oh she wore God. that really beautiful long red. It was beautiful dress jacket thing. Yes. And I saw people calling her the whore of Babylon. It's because crazy. of because it's red. Like y'all are insane. Like insane. No, we just insane. like that's the most annoying thing about the charismatic movement is it's just like so like there's a demon around every corner like. Like if you say Mark Driscoll into the mirror three times, does the Jezebel spirit appear? Right, right, right. And don't forget, um, you know, fire tunnels at Bethel, right? Or or, oh. or laying hands on people and speaking in tongues over them. That's not demonic, right? That's totally normal and cool. But a guy with a sword in his uh, in his mouth going down a pole, definitely demonic. Like it's just it's so interesting to see what how, how they see that but anyway yeah okay um well i'm glad that we covered this because people have been i've gotten so many dms i'm sure you have too i wanted to give really there was so much to cover i, I one video or reel couldn't do it. we had to give kind of the full context let's go to uh to our tweet of the week how's that sound let's do it we okay. need like a little jingle it's like tweet of the week boop 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 all right here's the first one our boy mike winger mm. yeah mike is a conservative um, like YouTuber um, who gets critiqued by actual scholars all the time. So take his words with a grain of salt. However, here's what he said uh, this week. He said, what political commitments do you think Christians are supposed to have? I'll start. Now, remember, the question is Christians, right? Therefore, people who want to follow Christ. Here they are. I'll start. Very strong pro-life slash anti-abortion. Two, pro-death penalty. Three, Freedom of religion, no state control of religion. Four, pro-traditional family and traditional marriage. I do think that these are not just political commitments, but Christian commitments that impact my political views. I hope people will, will interact in a, quote, not already angry fashion. I'm generally interested in seeing your responses. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to say, like, if you read the Sermon on the Mount, the top four are not these four things. No, no, they are not. <laughs> Notice how there's also nothing in there about taking care of the poor. Nope. Or, or the immigrants. Nope. Or the, no, it's just being against abortion. Yep. Being for the death penalty. Yes. So like, we can kill if... certain types of humans. No problem. <laughs> also, I actually asked him in a follow-up. I was like, what's your idea of freedom of religion? Just a complete separation of church and state? Right. And he didn't reply. Of course because not. Because that's not what they mean. That's not they what they mean. They want the church to impact the state. They don't want the state to impact the church. I'm snapping for you. That no, is, you know what? That, you know what? That, that, that is, is not freedom of religion. That that deserves an applause. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're exactly right. That that's a freedom of religion does not mean what you think it means in these spaces. Yeah, absolutely. Right, because notice he says freedom of religion slash no state control of religion, not right. no religion control of the state. 
Exactly. Because they do want that. 100%. 100%. Yeah. And then, of course, number four, pro-traditional family and, tradi- and traditional marriage, which is ironic considering Jesus was never married. He said mm-hmm. we should all be like eunuchs. And right. the Bible is not univocal on tradi- uh, what, what also, he would think as uh, – uh, that he would think is traditional marriage. Yeah. Right. And traditional marriage is actually polygamy. Yeah. And like – and uh, uh, arranged marriages. Traditional yeah. marriage – and people didn't marry for love. People didn't choose – their partner because they loved them. They chose right. marriage spouses for very practical reasons. This family has a lot of goats. We need more goats in our family. They, they have more land. Let's marry for those. Like that's traditional marriage. So the idea that they're pro-traditional marriage is no, they're not. <laughs> Do you have a lot of goats, April? Because I, because our family you know, needs actually, goats. I have zero goats, ah, actually. All right. All I've right. got a lot of Jezebel spirits, though. I can. Yeah, no, I got plenty of those, too. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All <laughs> no, right. you don't. You're a man. True. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so that's Mike Winger's tweet. Definitely a swing and a miss on that one. Pro life on. and pro death. Back yeah. To back. Yeah, because the it's Bible. <laughs> all right, here's our boy, Eric Kahn. This one's pretty intense. Uh, trigger warning mm-hmm. for our audience. Fathers, don't let your daughters dress like. Actually, you want to read this one? Let me read it. Yeah, I know you don't want to say that word. I don't I'll want to say, say it. it. Thank okay. you. Okay. I am reading this as it is written. So yeah, YouTube, right. don't, don't take yeah. us down. Okay. Eric Kahn says, fathers, don't let your daughters dress like whores just because it's prom. Your job is to protect her modesty and sexual purity, not to help her flaunt it before the lustful eyes of young boys. <sighs> it blows me away that these bros are like, we stand on the Bible. And then what he doesn't say is, fathers, if your sons lust after someone, make sure they gouge out their eyes because it's not a woman's job to manage what they think. The, right. the Bible Which is, is what clear. what Jesus said. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, instead it's on the women. It's on the women. Which, by the way, to be very clear, there is no talk about sexual female modesty in the Bible. Okay, people, when, when they hear women be modest, which I think comes out of like First Timothy, it's talking about financial modesty. That That's the yeah. context. Nothing to do with if someone's showing their shoulders or their or cleavage or their neck or something. It's not on women to manage how men think about them. It is on men to manage their own damn thoughts and to be biblical and to gouge yeah. out their eyes like Jesus told them to if they lust. The Bible is clear. Right. Stop objectifying women. It Please, be, Jesus. Like, Father, stop letting your – don't let your sons objectify women. Exactly. That be the, the tweet, but it's not. Amen. All right, and our yeah. last one, a doozy. This is a picture. I'll describe it. This is from our boy Roger Stone. Roger Stone was someone who was part of the uh, plot to overturn the 2020 election. He's a – yeah, he's just deeply embedded in this world. Here's what he said. I'm going to read this directly. This drives the atheistic, godless communists crazy – at Real Donald Trump 2024. It's a picture, an American flag's in the background, the Holy Bible is to the left, and Donald Trump is in the forefront holding a Bible, and it says in big, bold letters, endorsed by Jesus Christ. I can't even. Endorsed by Jesus Christ. And he is like not, he's being unironic here. He shared this, I went I went to look myself because like there's no way this is real. And sure enough, there it was. Roger Stone tweeted. Yeah, this is not satire. Donald Trump endorsed by Jesus Christ. Now, it's interesting because do you think this would set people up into a tizzy on Twitter? Like all the bros who are like, oh, the transgender people. Oh, everything is woke. Oh, look, a, a, a trans athlete won a race. Oh, we're under attack. I mean, that that's what they blow up all day. Some arbitrary high school race. I just saw it happen last week. That That's what the fo- that's the focus. And then this gets sent out by Roger Stone, endorsed by Jesus Christ, Donald Trump, not a peep. Not a freaking no. peep. Silence. 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 Also, Roger Stone, like, this drives the atheistic, godless communist crazy. Like, that right. should drive Christians crazy. If you follow the teachings of Jesus, you should be offended that someone would think that Jesus Christ would would endorse any political candidate, but especially Donald Trump. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I a thousand percent agree. So those are our three tweets. Mike Winger with the pro-life, pro-death view. Uh, Eric Kahn um, calling daughters a word I'm not going to say. And then we have this screenshot of, hey, good news, everyone. Jesus Christ has officially endorsed Donald Trump for president. What do you think, April? 
Uh, I mean, I don't want to applaud it at all, but it's got to be Roger Stone because that's have to just agree. so wild. That 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 is wow. I, like imagine... for all the people that are like Christian nationalism doesn't exist, I'm like, okay, okay, here it is. What do you, what do you call this? Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, Roger Stone. Tweet of the week. You win. Yay! Yay! Oh, April, what a great recap, man. We covered a lot. And we, we didn't even talk about Trump's on trial. Like, I, like friends, oh, I know. I know. We, we, we could have done so many things. But this Mark Driscoll situation needed to be unpacked with all of its detail. And, of course, mm. I will be keeping track. I know you will too, April, uh, on the update on that. And I'm sure we're going to report back next week whatever the news story is, along with my recap of my time at Preston Sprinkle's Exiles yeah. and Babylon Conference. You know what? There's actually some similarities between Mark Driscoll and Donald Trump because oh, I am I'm continually flabbergasted that Trump can still have support from evangelicals yeah. after like you know gestures at everything, um, and Mark Driscoll is the same that he can still have support because at, at the end of the day, it's not actually about doing the right thing, following the teachings of Jesus. It's about power and whether yeah. or not the person that you're following is giving you what you want. A hundred percent. Oh, we did it, April. Another we recap. An- another recap. Wow. And I did what this, a doozy. I did this while I was on the go. It worked. My, my, my makeshift studio, it worked. So that's good. You deserve an applause for that. Do I? Okay. I'll hit, yeah. I'll hit the give yourself an applause. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank God for this moment and for this mm. award. It means so much. You know. Do you want to anyway. close this out in prayer? Yes, I will. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, friends. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, if you have a news story you want us to talk about, send it over to news at the newevangelicals.com. Great talking to all of you. April, I will see you next week. See ya. Bye.